Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we're going to be talking about playing tabletop RPGs solo. Before we get into that, we actually have a call-in, uh, so let's go ahead and play that. Hey John, Daniel from Bandits Keep Calling In. Good to see you on Anchor. This is a great platform, so I'm glad you have joined the community. Good, solid advice there on restocking. Uh, you know, when you were talking about the gnolls and the orcs, I was thinking to myself, oh, that's interesting. So if you're going to have them have a combat, right, because it's always nice when you first put a an adventure together you're like these guys are warring but if the players kind of know that then they leave and then they come back three weeks later like how has it progressed are they just standing there so i'm wondering uh do you actually play out those combats or you just roll something randomly or do some subtractions and such that's what i'd be curious about um because i'm very tempted myself to, in those situations to actually play it out so you know get a either grab one player or even two players and just have them play the two sides of the factions and just do a little uh, mini battle or just do it myself if I'm, if I'm, you know, got some spare time, I could just sit down and play it out just rolling dice and such. Uh, yeah, let me know how you do that. Hey, Daniel, thanks for the call in. Uh, so how do I resolve those combats? Uh, this is actually a really good episode for you to have called in for <laughs> because uh, I do resolve them in solo play. Uh, now, if there's a lot of them, I'll uh, I'll use Ringmail. Uh, you can get Ringmail for free on DriveThruRPG, by the way, if you guys didn't know that. It is a retro clone of Chainmail. I will use ringmail and kind of like play them out. So like I see orcs as having uh, more complex tactics than say gnolls. Um, however, gnolls will make up for their uh, simple tactics with just sheer brutality. So like a gnoll may get you in a pincer maneuver, but it's going to continue to squeeze that pincer until you're dead. There's uh, there's no breaking to there's no breaking for gnolls. They uh, they want that meat. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for calling in, Daniel. That was uh, that was an interesting thing to talk about. All right, well, let's get back to the other aspects of solo play. First, we'll start off with the obvious. Why? Tabletop games are social things, and you should play them with friends. Friends make the experience a lot better, and you couldn't pay me to play with uh, someone who isn't at least an acquaintance of mine. However, solo play can be fun on its own. Uh, aside from the simple fun of rolling dice, it gives you a chance to engage your imagination on your own terms. I don't know about you guys, but as a kid I was always thinking of like cool action scenes and stuff, how characters and stories I read and games I played would react to different situations. Sometimes going as far as like mapping out entire side stories from them. Another example is uh, I was and am a big fan of pro wrestling, uh, if you couldn't tell that by my accent that is. Uh, as a kid I was always think of storylines that I thought would be fun and play them out in my action figures. Like, why is old Stone Cold giving Hulk Hogan the stunner? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Oh hell yeah! And uh, then, as I got older and I got more into video games, uh, that kind of creative energy went into more sandbox games. Like, I always loved playing The Sims, doing different life paths, and like making up stories and encounters and stuff like that. Then, once I got into PC gaming, I fell in love with RimWorld and Dwarf Fortress because they generate so many cool stories from their gameplay. I, s I suppose you could actually think about it like solo role-playing is the analog version of to the digital sandbox video game. You know, except instead of having, like, graphics, you got to put more uh, work on your imagination department with solo role-playing. But I think the trade-off of freedom is worth it. Uh, after all, like, at least to me, aside from the social aspect, the main feature of a tabletop game over a video game is the unlimited freedom that you have. Video games will always be constrained in one way or another because they're, they're finite products. Whereas a tabletop game, you're only limited by the game master, and occasionally how you're rolling that night. But uh, enough of the why, if you've clicked on this, I probably don't have to sell you on solo role-playing being something that you can do. You're probably already interested and you're wanting to know what you can do with it. The big advantage for me in solo role-playing is expanding your world. You could flesh it out by having other adventuring parties roaming around, delving in dungeons, and possibly even succeeding. It adds a whole lot more to the world when the party finds old adventurer bones in the dungeon, especially if they recognize them. You see a pile of gore and bones attached to what used to be a torso, and you see a familiar anchor-shaped necklace. And then your players remember, or more likely the Game Master <laughs> reminds them, <laughs> that they saw this necklace on Fitz the Fighter, a member of another party they met on the road. Or maybe a hireling they decided not to hire because he smelled bad or something. And, uh, you know, the reaction to that is, well, why not just manually place them? Why go through the effort of playing with yourself? Uh, well, it's a different experience than, you know, world building and just putting things in or even writing a fiction novel. Uh, the dice add the obvious layer of unpredictability, 
but you also get the chance to immerse yourself in the characters. Uh, so solo play doesn't mean you only play one character, although I know m many people who do so. Usually when I play solo, I run an entire party. Uh, one group of my players have actually met one of my solo groups, and they took out a big monster together, and that was a, a memorable thing for them. Now, you know, within the party, uh, I just rolled them up according to the rules of basic fantasy. So 3d6 down the line, I kitted them out, and I began dungeon crawling. And in contrast, when writing fiction, I tend to do singular characters, uh, like point of views, but adding in these other characters who may argue and disagree with each other makes for some interesting situations. Arguments I would usually resolve with dice, uh, or taking votes and rolling to see who would roll or who would vote for what. Now, you could always designate someone a leader or a main character and only play through their perspective, but I do like mapping out all those interactions and I think it's pretty fun. So then, you could have stuff like your solo party uh, was arguing in a tavern about some orcs who seemed to have black powder weaponry. So when your actual players are in town uh, asking around about some orcs, you could have some tavern regular mention. Yeah, some guys were talking that they saw some orcs that had exploding sticks or something like that. I don't know. I think they had too much to drink. Which could, of course, lead to the players doubting the rumors and going off on a wild goose chase that they conducted themselves. Uh, or they could just think, well, that's weird. Okay, they drank too much. And realizing the rumor was true when they get 2d6 worth of musket ball to the chest. I also really like solo role-playing for resolving rumors that the players didn't follow up on. I think it's a lot funner to play these out rather than just resolving them in the background with a dice roll, but that could be because I make up and generate rumors kind of on the fly, so I usually don't have a they do Y or X happens unless it's like a super obvious thing like help the town crop is on fire. Okay, well we don't care, we're leaving town, then of course that town's going to lose population to starvation or whatever. And the second biggest reason I recommend solo play is the ability to play other systems. Now, I usually do this to get a decent grasp of a system before running it for other people, because I don't really retain information that well unless I use it. Uh, but this is freeing too. Maybe you have a game that you want to play but can never get anyone to do so. Or your players are the dreaded, we only want to play and learn one rule set types. Uh, now, personally, I'm pretty lucky in that regard. Both of my groups enjoy playing different games, and if I'm getting tired of a campaign and need a break or something, I just have them vote on what else they want to play. However, I'm aware that my experience isn't the most common in that regard. And to tie this episode up, I'm going to talk about a recent example. I want to play Savage Worlds. I have ran it once, and I loved it. I also had a rumor that I wanted the players to go after, but, you know, being players, they didn't, of course. Uh, the rumor was about an elf getting some muscle together to sail the Sea of Dread. My players said, well, that sounds pretty spooky. Uh, we'll let someone else deal with that. Damn. I I really wanted that, but uh, good thing I didn't prep anything. <laughs> so, uh, I was really curious to how Elrod the elf uh, happened, like what happened to him and what makes this sea so dreadful. So, I rolled up stats for him and a four-man adventure within Savage Worlds to set sail. I've not played any sessions yet, but I will be recording a video on it and to show you how I do things, which you can consider a companion piece to this. Uh, so, I mean, in, for me, it's a triple win. I get to play more RPGs, I get to see how a story went down, which also means more rumors for my main game, and then I get to play a system, I get to play a system uh, I enjoy but haven't got to play too much of. And uh, that is all that I have today. Uh, look at that. We doubled the last podcast. <laughs> uh, I hope that this inspired you to do some solo play yourself. Um, you know, if you already do it, let me know some cool stuff you've done uh, solo in the comments, or maybe ask a question that you have or something like that. Uh, if you want to be part of the show, you could always send me a voicemail through Anchor, uh, or just send me an email to john at terminalgoblingames.com, and uh, you know I'll answer it here on the podcast or in the video. I don't know, it's kind of interchangeable. I'm not really separating these two. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See ya.